Breaking news. Head coach Mike McDaniel is finalizing the final adjustments for Sunday's matchup. The Miami Dolphins are heading into a critical Week 12 matchup against the New England Patriots, and there's no shortage of buzz surrounding the team. From the battles at safety to the big decisions in the upcoming NFL draft, there's plenty to discuss. I have something very important to share with you, but before I go any further, make sure you've hit the like button if you believe the Miami Dolphins will beat the Patriots. If possible, write something like, I believe. Go Dolphins. First, the Jordan Poyer conversation. Signed to provide stability at safety, Poyer's performance has been nothing short of disappointing this season. Despite high expectations, he has struggled in both pass coverage and the run game, earning some of the lowest ratings among NFL safeties. Fans are asking if it's time for Poyer to take a back seat to give the younger players a chance. But here's the reality. The Dolphins don't have any clear alternatives. Marcus May has been a part of the rotation and has shown improved coverage skills, but his tackling has been a liability, with key missed plays that have cost Miami big moments like Ray Davis's 75-yard touchdown run or Kyler Murray's failed stop on a critical third down run. Options like Elijah Campbell or elevating rookie Patrick McMorris from the practice squad seem unlikely to make an immediate impact. So for now, it appears Miami is stuck with Poyer as its top option, even as fans are clamoring for change. Another hot topic is defensive coordinator Anthony Weaver. Weaver is starting to draw interest as a potential head coach, and his leadership has been a bright spot for Miami's defense this season. NFL insider Tom Pelissero even listed him as a rising name in coaching circles. However, it's probably too soon to see him leave Miami. While his work as D.C. and his time as an assistant head coach in Baltimore have showcased his potential, it's expected that Weaver will stay with the Dolphins for at least another season. That's good news for a defensive unit that has shown toughness and improvement under his guidance compared to last season. Turning to the upcoming draft, one name that has emerged as a potential target is Michigan defensive lineman Mason Graham. While the Dolphins aren't expected to tank this season, there's no doubt that the defensive line will be a priority. With Christian Wilkins departing in free agency and veteran Calais Campbell likely nearing retirement, Miami needs a long-term solution. Graham, known for his dominance and consistency during his time with the Wolverines, would be an ideal fit if he falls to Miami's draft range. The Dolphins' front office, led by Chris Greer, will need to carefully evaluate their draft board to address critical areas like offensive line, safety, cornerback, and defensive line. Speaking of the offensive line, there's some good news on the horizon. Isaiah Wynn is expected to return soon, providing depth and flexibility for a unit that's been hit hard by injuries. With Austin Jackson on injured reserve, Wynn's ability to play multiple positions makes him a valuable asset as Miami looks to stabilize its protection schemes. While the Dolphins have elevated Jackson Carmen from the practice squad as a temporary fix, Wynn's return could provide a much-needed boost heading into the final stretch of the season. One of the biggest shifts in the Dolphins' offense this season has been their approach to the deep passing game. Defenses across the league are playing more too high safety schemes, and Miami has faced this coverage more than any other team. This has limited the explosive downfield plays fans have come to expect from Tua Tagovailoa, Tyreek Hill, and Jalen Waddell. Instead, head coach Mike McDaniel has adjusted the offensive strategy to focus on quick passes, inside runs, and exploiting the middle of the field. Players like tight end Jonah Smith and running back Devon Chain have become key targets in this new approach. While some fans might miss the highlight reel chump plays, the efficiency of the short passing game has kept the offense moving and Tua protected in the pocket. His 73.4% completion rate this season is evidence of the system's success, even if it looks different from previous years. As we gear up for the Patriots game, the team's performance in recent weeks has shown signs of hope. The defense has stepped up significantly, while the offensive line has excelled in pass protection despite struggles in the run game. But questions remain about the future, particularly when it comes to retaining key players like Jevon Holland. Holland is set to become a free agent this offseason and is expected to command a hefty payday. Projections suggest a contract in the range of four years and $74 million, which would make him one of the league's highest paid safeties. Can Miami afford to keep him? And if not, how will they rebuild their safety room, given the struggles with players like Poyer?
Now, I want to hear from you, Dolphins fans. What do you think about the safety situation? Should the team continue with Jordan Poyer despite his struggles, or is it time to give someone else a chance? And how do you feel about Anthony Weaver potentially becoming a head coach in the future? Would it be a loss for Miami, or is it just a matter of time? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and stay tuned for part two, where we'll dive deeper into the decisions surrounding Calais Campbell, draft strategy, and more. Let's dive back into the conversation and focus on some of the key topics that could shape the Dolphins' future. One of the names generating significant debate is veteran defensive lineman Calais Campbell. At 38 years old, Campbell remains a respected figure in the locker room, but his on-field contributions have understandably declined. His snap count has been carefully managed throughout the season to preserve his impact during crucial moments, yet the Dolphins' defensive line has often struggled to generate consistent pressure. Campbell's leadership, however, cannot be overstated. Younger players like Jalon Phillips and Andrew Van Ginkill have credited him for mentoring them and helping refine their techniques. But the reality is that Miami needs more than mentorship, they need production. With Christian Wilkins expected to leave in free agency, Campbell's potential retirement would leave a significant void on the defensive line. That's why names like Mason Graham from Michigan or other top college prospects are already being discussed as potential replacements. Looking at the bigger picture, the Dolphins' front office will face tough decisions regarding their draft and free agency strategies. Miami's cap situation isn't dire, but it will require some creativity to address multiple areas of need. Alongside the defensive line, the safety and cornerback positions remain top priorities. Xavier Howard's play has been inconsistent, and while rookie Cam Smith has shown flashes of potential, it's clear the Dolphins will need reinforcements in the secondary to compete with the NFL's top offenses. Another area of focus for Miami has to be the offensive line. While Isaiah Wynn's return provides a short-term boost, the Dolphins still lack depth and consistency across the unit. Injuries have plagued this group for years, and while Tua Tagovailoa's quick release often masks protection issues, it's not a sustainable formula. The Dolphins can't afford to keep gambling on short-term solutions. They need to invest in young, durable talent through the draft. Speaking of Tua, let's address the quarterback situation. There's no question that Tua has taken significant strides this season. His decision-making, accuracy, and leadership have been evident week after week. However, questions about his long-term durability continue to linger. With Tua's rookie contract nearing its end, Miami will soon face a critical decision. Commit to him as their franchise quarterback with a lucrative extension or consider alternative options. For now, all signs point to the Dolphins sticking with Tua, especially given how well he fits into Mike McDaniel's system. But don't be surprised if the team invests in a quality backup quarterback this offseason, just in case. On the defensive side, Jevon Holland's contract situation loans large. As we mentioned earlier, Holland's projected contract could make him one of the highest paid safeties in the league. The question isn't just whether the Dolphins can afford him, but also whether they should. Now, over to you, Dolphins fans. What are your thoughts on the decisions the team is facing? Should they prioritize extending Jevon Holland, or would you rather see that money spent elsewhere? And what about Calais Campbell? Should the team bring him back for one more season, or is it time to move on? Let me know your take in the comments, and as always, stay tuned for more updates and insights as we cover every step of the Dolphins' journey.